Welcome to the 13th session of Agriculture 194X, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. Before I go on, I'd like to make a few announcements. Uh, if I could have the Elmo, if uh, any of you have to get a hold of me, uh, you can get a hold of me by mail at uh, UH Hilo College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720 4091. You can also get a hold of me by phone at 933. 0850 and if I'm not in uh, you can always leave a message on my code of phone and you can also get a hold of me by fax at 974-7674 and also uh, if you are on the internet you can get a hold of me at jfujii at hawaii.edu and while I have the Elmo here I'd just like to say a few words about the College of Agriculture forestry and natural resource management and some of the programs that we have. Uh, we have an animal science specialization with a pre-veterinary medicine option and also a production option. For those who are interested in the business aspects of agriculture, we have an agro, agri business uh, specialization. We also have an agroecology and environmental quality for those who are interested in how agriculture impacts the environment and also for those who are interested in uh, raising fish or aquatic plants or ornamental fish uh, we have an aquaculture program and we also have a crop protection specialization and a general agriculture specialization and finally uh, tropical horticulture specialization also, I'd like to uh, mention that uh, I'll, I think I'll first put it on the Elmo here. Let me uh, back it up a little bit. Uh, I have a uh, book that uh, is now available. It's called uh, Fred Tom, uh, Son of Hawaii. Uh, Fred Tom was the first dean of the College of Agriculture, and he is of Hawaiian Chinese descent. And uh, he is a, a very learned person. He uh, went to Lahaina Luna High School on Maui. And he wanted to go to college, but he didn't have any money. But uh, he was able to get scholarships. And uh, GI Bill, I believe, helped him out. And he was able to go on to college. He went on to Cornell University and received his doctorate degree. Uh, he also graduated from, before that, he graduated from UH Manoa, and he was a class president there on campus, and also he was on the uh, Manoa basketball team. But it's a very interesting uh, bibliography written by his wife, Nancy, Nancy Tom, and if you're interested in purchasing this book, it's $10, and the proceeds go to the Fred Tom Memorial Scholarship. So it's a very interesting reading book. Uh, tells about his whole genealogy and uh, his whole life. And uh, he was the first dean of our college. And if you're interested in purchasing this book, you can get a hold of me, of course, at these uh, different uh, different methods by phone, fax, or mail, or email. Very interesting book again, and, and the proceeds will go to the Fred Tom Memorial Scholarship. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience, and of course those of you here in the studio, can ask questions of our guests this evening. Uh, this evening we have a very uh, interesting program again. Uh, this evening we are featuring the Big Island Bird Hunters and we have with us this evening Steve Hurt. Steve is the president of the Big Island Bird Hunters and he has also uh, worked for the Kailua Air Conditioning and Refrigeration. 
uh, company. And joining uh, Steve, we have Keith Nell, retired from the city and county of Honolulu. Maybe we can get the camera on uh, our people. If you could all stand in a row over there so we can all see you. Okay, get close together. Uh, maybe uh, Steve, maybe you might wave your hand uh, so everyone can see you. Okay. And we have Keith. Uh, where's Keith? Okay. I'm right here. And joining <laughs> Keith, we have Derek Nakamoto. Derek is with J&J &J Auto Repairs. He's a refinishing technician there. He was on our program before. And we have Ronald Nakamura. Ron is with T&T Electric. And uh, finally, we have Neo uh, Okuda. Neo uh, works at the Kulani Correctional Facility. <coughs> and they are all members of the Big Island Bird Hunters. So we're going to turn the class over to Steve and the Big Island Bird Hunters. So Steve, why don't you take over the class? OK, thank you. Big Island Bird Hunters was formed back in 1994. Doesn't seem like too long ago, but time has gone fast. Uh, the club was formed basically to perpetuate the sport of upland game bird hunting through retention and acquisition of public hunting areas to preserve and enhance the hunting areas utilizing sound biological practices through cooperative efforts with state and federal agencies to promote hunter ethics and safety and to introduce and educate all people and parties in the sport and activities of the club and to provide and promote bird dog training and activities. To that source, we brought in uh, professional dog trainers. We've installed watering units throughout uh, public hunting areas, worked with the uh, <coughs> US Fish and Wildlife Service and the state deal in our agencies closely to uh, improve the areas that we've got by adding watering units, out planting uh, native plants, food source uh, plants, and other items. Uh, the club has been in uh, the county fair for about the last six years, and uh, we've had a lot of fun doing that and participating in other county uh, activities that uh, promote the sport. Uh, the best thing to do now on, if we can get the camera over to show our little display over here and explain that uh, game bird hunting are not native birds. Game birds are birds that raised, or not raised, but they're introduced into the wild. And uh, these are hunted animals. They're not on any endangered list. And there's quite an abundance during good years. If we can get over to the top and see it, uh, the top two on the left and right are Why don't you, I pheasants. Think on the oh, okay. OK. Well, what we're showing now will be our mm. friend, the real turkey. And this is one that we always try to harvest just before Thanksgiving. If luck prevails, uh, <coughs> that's what we'll have. Off to its right on the bottom is what we consider the king of the upland game birds. It's the pheasant. This is known throughout the hunting world as the ultimate bird to uh, pursue. And they are very tasty. To the right of that, we have the college pheasant, which came from India. And uh, it, too, is another pheasant family, a little bit different species, but uh, one that we appreciate being able to put on the dinner table. If we're able to swing over to the other display and show what we've got up there, uh, we'll also see that up on the top when the picture comes in that uh, we've got <coughs> two pheasants, one to the left and to the right, showing the uh, beautiful colors that come out with them while they're in flight. Just below that, is what's known as the chucker. These animal, these birds are normally up above the upper elevation vegetation line. And to hunt those requires hunting from the 11,000 foot level up. So it takes some sturdy lungs, strong legs, and uh, a good healthy constitution. If we get a little bit lower and can zoom in, we can see to the Right, the big brown bird that looks like a chicken, that's the Franklin Urkel. That's the one that'll sit in the bushes and laugh at us with a cackle as we pursue it, and it normally gets away. The two that are right in the front are called the California quail. We can tell by the little bob top on it. These are well known by many, many people. 
They're spread throughout the United States in many, many varieties. California quail, there's Japanese quail, Gamble's quail, and various other assorted ones. They're all great on the dinner table. And off to the left, the black Franklin. It's a very elusive bird, and one that's very actually really nice looking. If you, you can see the colors, the chest is brown. Sometimes it'll turn almost a golden hue. The uh, collar around the neck will change uh, colors during season, and if you look on the wings, you'll also see some gold shining. So these are some of the birds that we pursue during our bird hunting uh, times, and we're unfortunate that uh, most of the ones that were harvested during the season have been consumed. So with our upcoming cooking, we're gonna have to substitute chickens for what we're gonna try and show you folks today. Uh, the chickens are the only thing that we have left, and we do eat quite a few of those. The first film or video that we're going to see is, if we could start that now, I think it would be a good time. Okay. Um, the first video that we're going to see is taken from activities that we have at our annual, I call it the postseason blues depression breaker. When bird season <laughs> ends, there's kind of a letdown, and we all get together and kick around a good, happy, uh, season and uh, everyone has a good time with this everyone participates it's a potluck affair and by being potluck everyone that shows up all participate and help with the ongoing thing here we're starting to unload and get everything ready for the very first uh, portion of the uh, setup which is getting the rotisserie ready for our rotisserie chicken this is just bringing in uh, wood that we've gathered through permits from DLNR. Again, the cooperative effort and doing everything the way it should be. These are dried and fallen logs, so there's no uh, problem with that. Here we're getting it split and ready. Steve, uh, what does it take to join the Big Island Bird Hunters? Just come down to one of our meetings. Our meetings are held the first Tuesday of every month at Wailoa State Park at Pavilion Number 3, and we start approximately at 7 p.m. So come anyone down. can just come and... It's open to the public. Just come down, say hi, and uh, we'll welcome you in. Okay. Is there a, is there a fee? We uh, have a membership a dues. Fee? It's $20 a year, and I think okay. that's extremely reasonable for what we've got going on. Uh, that seems to suit everybody's pocket budget and uh, leaves a little bit left over for dog food and for us to be able to enjoy our trips up on the mountain with the gas that we use. Okay, and what are you folks doing now? Okay, here we've got the uh, wood inside the 55 gallon drums and getting ready to get the fire started so we can get some chicken going on. And if I can ask Derek to step up and kind of help narrate this with me as we go through it, I think we can yeah. talk back and forth and uh, show what's going on. Okay. At this okay. point, we're using a propane torch to kind of give the uh, wood a kickstart. Stephanie Okuda is coming in there to give us a hand. Derek, and yeah, you got uh, a few things in here we can what kick is in. Your Wait. Phone number. Who <coughs> to, you know, if someone wanted to call you in regard to the bird uh, hunters uh, uh, group, uh, what number do they call? They can call nine six 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 one nine zero. That's nine six 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 one nine zero. Okay. That's a phone or fax. And, and later I can give you an email address. Okay. Now you can explain what's happening. Okay, Derek, will you give us a hand with what we got going on here? Well, right now, we're setting up for, put about 10 chickens there on top. Yeah, there were 10 that day. We did 10 chickens that day. Menial and... And that's, uh, you're putting it? the uh, chicken right onto the center and Stephanie. of the rotisserie? Yeah. Okay. And we, and, and this is the same unit that you used when you did the huli huli pig earlier this semester, right? Yeah, we did them, the pig, the beef, and the chicken, turkey, all the same. Almost all the same going to be hooked up. And then, of course, the, uh, the part for this whole uh, huli huli machine will be in our cookbook. And yeah. uh, Derek gave me the drawings and everything, so that will all be in our uh, up-and-coming 194X uh, cookbook. 
And so about how many chickens can you put we, on there? That day we did 10 chickens and we seasoned it with garlic salt and with oil, for basin with oil so it wasn't, wouldn't burn. And then when, once you put it on that, the main rotisserie, then, then what are you doing? You got to lock them in with the side rods, yeah, for that thing to okay, kind of so wobble, yeah, in the beginning. I see. The main rods coming in through the opening of the chicken and yeah. out the front. And if we back them up, they kind of help hold in. And where mm. the four rods, they're being placed over the wings and then under the legs to kind of hold them in place. And then the, as the locking plates come together, it'll hold them from going left and right. So you've done turkey on this thing too? We did turkeys on this thing. How many turkeys can you get on that bit? We did 11. 11 Actually turkeys? nine. Wow, yeah. and what was the average weight? I would say at least 16 to 14 pounds. pounds, yeah. Mm. Better to get them all the same size because you get a little bigger one and you got small one. The, the small one's going to be a little... Cook unevenly, yeah. yeah. it's going to be cooked unevenly because you got to take them off all the same time. And, and I guess all the uh, chickens or turkeys are the same height, so uh, yeah. if one is bigger, it's going to get more heat than the, the smaller ones, right? Yeah. Okay, and how long have you, uh, you folks been uh, having your post-blue uh, party? From the second year we started. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we'd like to note on this also is that despite the fact that this is a big, almost commercial looking setup, that this can be done with one or two chickens with some of the standardized uh, smaller home units that are available. So don't be afraid to try it in your own backyard, whether yeah. it be game birds, chicken, or Cornish game hens. Do you think uh, uh, the pheasant will taste better if you do it this way? And the, the pheasant Urkel? tastes, uh, Good I wouldn't say better. That any recipe that you use that suits your taste, you're going to find some very good eating. Okay. One of the things that we do as pre-preparation for our game birds, which is normally not done with the chicken, is soaking the birds after we bring them back home and we clean them up. Uh, we'll soak them in baking soda and salt water for 24 hours in the refrigerator, bring that back out, rinse it real good, soak it for another 24 hours in salt water, and that'll pull a little bit of the gaminess that may be in them out and help uh, remove some of the blood that may have gone through in there when the shot went through. So what are you doing right here? You're tying the string around We're the... tying the center of the rod because the center is like weaker, yeah? the ends is stronger. So I just see. like the chicken will slide a little bit okay. until it's fully cooked. Well, halfway cooked, and then it will be like stiffer. Yeah, what happens when the, the stainless rods go in there, they form like a bow. Mm -hmm. So there's no tension on the middle chicken. So you use the string to hold that down and kind of take some of the spring effect out. Oh, I see. And here they're getting the, the oil treatment with a little bit of the garlic water put into them. That's just regular uh, cooking oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no big secrets on the whole <laughs> thing. What's, what's nice about being able to prepare the chickens this way, you don't need a lot of ingredients to really make the food taste good. Uh, it's been a simple affair, and as you can see, we've got, we've got helping hands throughout here. We're very fortunate to, to have all the good people in the group that we do. The hands are many and the talents are great. And you also did a hind quarter of beef over there that day also, right? Hind quarter of beef and uh, yeah, there was a separate rotisserie going uh, with a 48-pound hind quarter that was going on there, and that was basically, correct me if I'm wrong, just using uh, garlic and salt. Yeah, just garlic and salt, and base with oil. And round, and is that the outer <laughs> portions cook? You slice the outer portions off and continue adding the garlic and salt water affair to it. So how long do you have to uh, hooli hooli the chicken here uh, in order for it to be well? This chicken may be going to take you about two and a half hours. And how do you know when it's uh, cooked? When the temperature reaches 180, poetry, then you can tell it's fully cooked right through, yeah, through the mm -hmm. breast. So it looks like they're saluting now. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, our chicken salute. <laughs> Boy, every one of them came over. It was like waving hi. <laughs> And there it is, like a chorus line. For the first 45 minutes, it's going to shake a little bit, but after that, it'll be stiff already. Uh -huh. It firms up and the yeah. appetites grow. 
this is a this has been very fortunate that we've been able to do this for about the last six years. So Where how long has the bird uh, hunting, bird hunters uh, been uh, around? They've been around since 1994. 1994. And, uh, very quiet, uh, we haven't made a lot of noise, but we've been out trying to improve the habitat for future generations and as well as what's going on now. And how many members do you have? The membership is currently around 80 members and I'd like to say thanks to all those guys that have stayed in from the very beginning because the numbers have been very consistent. Everybody's been real well. It's a great group of men, women, and young adults is the way to say it for the people that we have as members. So is there a family uh, a family membership uh, and a single membership? There's uh, single membership, there's married membership, and family membership. And so what is, a, what is the cost of a family membership versus a single membership? The individual membership is $20 a year. When it goes to the family, it turns to 30 And for the additional young adults, we $5 a year on that. Okay. And I think the education gleaned from the time spent with us during our meetings to educate yourselves on what's going on is well worth it. So it looks like, what's the temperature there? I didn't know. Yeah, sorry we missed the temperature Just on that. Just about. It's getting close to uh, being able to keep tabs on what we're doing. With this. <laughs> and what, what are the bennies of uh, paying that dues uh, and being in the bird club other than meeting other bird hunters and uh, what, what, what other activities do you have? Well, uh, as I've mentioned before, we've gone to the county fair. We do a lot of work in the outdoors uh, in the off season. And working in the outdoors in itself is a reward that uh, only an individual can appreciate once they've gone through it. It becomes a, a real labor of love. And one thing that the Big Island Bird Hunters has become extremely well known for is the food that shows up at every individual gathering that we've ever had. Yeah, the last time I was there, unfortunately <laughs> I wasn't able to stay, but uh, there was a fantastic amount of food over there. I wish I could have uh, stayed, but uh, that day I had a bad cold and I just had to go home. And He could have taken some food. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time we talked about you coming down and filming it, we promised you two full picnic tables of food. And, uh, we didn't let you down on that part. You were right. <laughs> so now the chicken is uh, done. And what are you going to do now? Now we're going to remove the bars and get the chickens into the big stainless pan. Uh -huh. And uh, from there, they'll be cut up into <coughs> serving sizes. Okay. That's a delicate operation the cutting up portion. I think as we look at the film here further, we're going to see how that goes. So how many members do you have now uh, in the uh, Bird Hunters? We still have those 80 people in there. 80 people. 80 people. Now, if, if I'm not a bird hunter, can I join your club? Yeah, come on down. Okay. It's, it's worth the education. <laughs> and what about some of our college students here? If they want to learn about bird hunting, can they join the club too? It's, as I stated earlier, it's open to the public. And uh, first Tuesday of every month, 7 p.m., Wailoa State Park, Pavilion Number 3. And we welcome you, know, you. Some of the students, they're, they're really struggling to go to school and everything. And I was wondering if you had a student price for membership. We haven't had any <laughs> students show up to uh, form that price, but if we did, I'm sure we could accommodate with something. Okay, uh, UH Hilo students, uh, <laughs> if you're interested in uh, bird hunting and how to uh, hunt uh, game uh, up in the mountains, uh, join the Bird Hunters Club. A lot of good people there, a lot of good food. That is for sure. Boy, I'm getting hungry just <laughs> watching that. Uh, <laughs> Wow, that looks good. Yeah, like I said, it it's almost like uh, Kalua pig, huh? It's same. along the same lines. It it's comes the off the meat's just as tender and, and <coughs> juicy as can be. Oh. Derek, you want to elaborate a little bit more on the separation process? All can, yeah, all I can say, we got some for presentation right after this and show them. And I, I hear really uh, the bird hunters were at your house all day today doing some hula hula chicken, right? Uh, we had one big party over there today. <laughs> uh, sorry I couldn't make it, I was just too busy today. 
but boy, that's looking good. The students in, in the classroom look like they just can't wait to dig into that. Uh, well, I, I don't think we can really use Huli Huli Chicken because yeah. that, that's a patented that's name, I think, area. right? But, uh, but rolled, and, rolled and cooked, I guess, <laughs> we have to do for <laughs> now to keep everything, cooked, yeah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Wow. But here, here we're separating it, and you can actually see how quick and easy the meat comes off the, uh, the bone structure. So, Derek, what do you do with all the leftover bone? Well, right now, tonight, the leftover bones, Keith's going to make a um, 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 chicken bone soup for us. Mm. And it's very tasty. You guys are all going to enjoy that soup. <laughs> so you use uh, every part of that chicken? Yeah. Nothing is going to waste. We what about game birds? Can you make the soup out of the game birds too? You probably can make the same yes. thing with game birds. I don't it, see. Everything you can do with chickens, you can do with the game birds. Everything. And we said we would have used the game birds, but uh, they've been consumed prior <laughs> to this event. What, what is the best tasting game? I mean, is that like beauties and the beholder? Exactly. On the exactly. Yeah. There's people that uh, have got a real fancy tongue for the quail. Others that prefer the uh, the pheasant, and others that just strictly stay with the chucker. Now you shoot these birds with a shotgun, right? Yes. Now what happens when you bite into one of those little shots, or do you take them out, or? Well, we try to take those out before we get it cooked. Uh, there's an occasional one in there. Otherwise, you'll get a natural filling, huh? I was, I was actually uh, told I had one show up on an x-ray, so <laughs> they will go through you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you say we're going to have another video. And uh, yeah. what is the second video is going to be on the deep frying of uh, chicken, I believe. Yeah. So. Uh, I think the technicians are getting that video ready now and as soon as it's ready we can just go ahead and roll the video and uh, here we go. So who's going to explain this? Neil? Neil going to explain Neil this. And okay. What do we got there? Okay, this is a seasoning that we use. Okay. Um, we use this Cajun seasoning from Gaspro and we just um, dry off the chicken, get all the excess water off because when you get the chicken into that hot oil with the water, it's going to spatter a lot. I see. So we kind of just dry out, get out whatever water we can off the bird first. That's just a fresh roaster chicken, right? Yes. Okay. Any type of chicken, actually, whatever you prefer. Okay. Then we just sprinkle that um, Cajun seasoning. We just, it's something that we tried and we like, so we just tend to use that. You can. You can just put salt if you want, or whatever you desire, actually. Or you can probably <coughs> put that garlic salt on there, too. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine, too. But this Cajun uh, seasoning probably makes it uh, more spicy? Um, a little, yeah. It adds a little more flavor than just the garlic salt. We now, used to is this deep frying of the chicken uh, different from taste-wise than the huli huli chicken? Uh, slightly. You don't have the smoke um, flavor like the huli huli type, but it um, comes out real juicy because when you put it in that hot oil, it kind of seals in out of juice. Oh, I see. Pretty much instantly and then. So you just pour that the Cajun seasoning all around the chicken? Yes, pretty much. Okay. And again, you, you say you can get that uh, seasoning at Gaspro. Yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure you can get it elsewhere, but that's the only place that we know definitely that carries it in Hilo. Okay, and about how much oil do you need? Uh, to do those three chickens in the cooker at once, use approximately three gallons of oil. Okay. Yeah. And, and then that three gallons will be good for how many chickens would you say? Um, actually, you could reuse the oil after. We cook three chickens at a time. That's about what usually fits in at one time. Uh -huh. Yeah, or one turkey, yeah. Okay. And then we, well, usually we use the oil just for one cooking and then nobody's willing to keep 
olive <laughs> oil in their refrigerator. So, <laughs> so you really got to regulate the temperature of the oil. Yes, yes. We try not to exceed um, 350 degrees. Okay. It can go a little higher, but to prevent the burning of the oil, getting that bitter taste. So where can we get one of these uh, deep frying units? Uh, gas bro like I bro said, gas bro is okay. the only well, place that know, I definitely know carries it. Uh, gas bro has helped us out a lot. They donated yeah. that stove that you're going to use tonight, and uh, they know, donated the, uh, <coughs> the gas that we're using. Okay, what's happening now? Okay, now after we've seasoned all the turkeys, I mean the chickens, we, um, we got the oil hot, hot to temperature ready, so there's a rack in the pot that we lift up, um, place the chickens on, and lure them in. And on this um, time, we, for some reason, somebody, we miscalculated and somebody got four, four chickens instead of three chickens, so we did two cookings, two chickens a piece. Oh, I see. <coughs> Boy, that thing really boils over, doesn't it? Yeah. You gotta be careful not to uh, burn yourself as you lower that, uh, the chicken into the, the fryer, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's very hot. And as uh, soon as you get it in, no matter how much of the water you get off, it still splashes quite a bit. <coughs> so when you had your party, your post Post-season <laughs> blues depression Post breaker. Blues. Say that one quick. <laughs> which which uh, chicken went better, the huli huli chicken or the deep fried chicken? Uh, there's no counting because yeah. it's uh, mm -hmm. it's a feast over there, yeah. and there's, it's too hard to tell because the food kind of disappears good. real quick. They all went uh -huh. well. <laughs> okay. And as you mentioned, Gaspro providing things, but also I'd like to mention and say thank you very much to Glenn Kotomori, who's the manager over there, who is also <coughs> one of our club members. Okay, and what's that, 350? On, yeah, That's it's on 350. We try to keep it there. So w when, the ch when the chicken gets more or less cooked, they start floating, do they? Uh, no, it does a little, yeah. It, it floats a little. Okay. And about how long do you think it takes uh, to do the uh, deep fried chicken, roughly? Um, on an average size chicken like these, it took like about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Per mm. cooking, yeah. Okay. Have you done uh, pheasants this way and game birds? Uh, never tried yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This, this annual get, it, get together <coughs> with all the different foods, it's uh, a lot of times there's not very much of the game birds left already. As soon oh, as season starts, we commence the consumption already. And there and we're it known is. for eating chicken. Nice and golden brown. Yeah. Oh, 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 looks like it's got a nice there. crispy skin on the outside. Mmm. <laughs> They're gonna love this thing tonight. Yeah. Oh boy. I think I missed out a two <laughs> part. Oh, look at that. The look, party. there's look just just that. that's just a slight batch of what's on there. There was more food to follow that particular time. Here we have uh Masa and Judy Takaki doing the uh, <coughs> gentle carving on it. And there you go. <laughs> and that's the way you. That's the way we do the deep get fried the chicken. In there. Wow, that all looks good. All goes into a pot, and everyone lines up. Wow, I can see all the students. Their mouth is watering. Perhaps later next year for other programs, we'll have to do some of the different spices that can be done with the game birds, and. Uh, also let everybody know that this group has sort of a uh, sweet tooth amongst the members. And there is some, uh, you won't see them tonight, but we'll have to talk about them for upcoming sessions, perhaps for next year, but some of the desserts that were even there that unfortunately you weren't able to partake of. <laughs> <laughs> Not well, a dessert. Health comes first, and <laughs> we tried to keep the food healthy. Yeah. If you notice, most of the people here were, were keeping the uh, plastic gloves on for sanitation and it's uh, one of the things we try to keep uh, very much in track with. So cleanliness is uh, one thing to always bear in mind. Department of Health would be very proud to watch us do the initial cleaning, getting everything prepped, ready, cut up, and then served. I okay. think they'd be happier to sit down and eat the food with us. 
Well, so what are we going to cook tonight? Okay. Dirt? Yeah, we're going to start with the chicken. <laughs> okay. The deep fried chicken. Uh, so you're going to actually do a deep fried chicken here in class. Yeah. Right here. We're Hopefully do we don't set up. Three. Okay. Oh. This, this is going to be a treat for us. <laughs> we didn't Congrats. even have to see the video. Take some of those up. Okay. Okay. Oh, that was just a precursor. I'm yeah. sure we've got some appetite stimulated by now. Okay. Where's the closest fire alarm? Mm. Sensing unit. You have sensing yeah. units in here, Jack? Okay. For smoke, smoke, smoke detectors? No, no smoke okay. detectors. Okay. okay, we'll be in good shape. That's good. <laughs> I mean, we, we've had this place smoking once before. Try some towels. You like that glove? Yeah. Plenty, like the milk glove. So this, this is just uh, doing the um, deep fried chicken. Yeah. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to just try to wipe them up, get them all dried. Okay. So the oil. Is it 350 yet? Yeah. 350. So Derek, uh, we, we got the, the, uh, the Big Island Bird Hunters. Maybe next time we might have to get the Pig Hunters on. Yeah, I had I had talked to the, um, one of the club members, yeah, the Pig uh -huh. Hunting guys. And they yeah. said they was willing to come on. And they're willing to come on. Yeah. Okay, and, and they'll do some fancy cooking for us too, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, we just got to get this bug all dried. And of course, if there's any other group out there in the community that wants to come on and do some cooking, uh, just give me a call at 933-0850 and uh, we'll get you on the, on the class here and uh, you can share some cooking with us and uh, share it with the uh, community. This is real fast, this thing going to be. It dropped just a little bit when I opened the top of it. So about, uh, you say about 20 minutes uh, once you dry it and season it? Uh, just about uh, six minutes, no, per pound, no? Five, six minutes per pound. And what is that this seasoning called? Is this called Cajun? Uh, Cajun seasoning. Cajun you seasoning. Hold that up further. Okay. What does it say, that. Keith? Says King Cooker, Cajun seasoning. Yeah, right. Okay. Inside, yeah. yeah, right away. Cannot help. All right, boy, that that looks like it's gonna really taste good. And besides this uh, fried chicken, you're gonna do uh, what was that? A, a, a stuff, something stuffed with bacon or chicken stuffed with bacon? Uh, game bird stuffed with bacon. Okay. Bacon. bacon, bacon wrapped actually around game bird. And then you're also going to do a binha the host. Is that how you pronounce it? Vina dosh. Vina dosh. <laughs> okay, that's, that's one of well, that's yeah. one of Keith's. I'm known okay. to murder that's one of Keith's names. Songs. <laughs> what you call? You put them on. Okay. Vina dosh. Vina dosh. Okay. And what is that? It's it's uh, very similar right. to the Filipino way of doing um, a double. You want to oh, put okay. the vinegar, the okay. pepper. Yeah. Well, let's pepper. get our overhead camera before we uh, start uh, putting those uh, chickens in. We're going to see it right here on the classroom, and uh, we'll get our overhead camera. Okay. Okay. Wow, this one you've got yeah. three chickens in here. Boy, that really boils over, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess when, the when most of the water goes out, then uh, the bubbling will stop, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Do I cover them now? <laughs> 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 Okay, you're going to leave that there yeah, for a while. Yeah, we'll leave that there for a while. Okay. And you'll just check the temperature to make sure it doesn't yeah. go beyond 350, 350 right? Yes. Okay. And okay, so what are we going to do now? We're going to... Uh, we're going to do that stuff. Um, game bird with bacon right now. Okay. In that fryer too, right after we take out that um, chicken. Do you know how much one of these uh, deep frying units cost about? How much do you think that? Yeah. I'm not real sure. <laughs> How fan? You go oh, see Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can call Gaspro. I think. Call Gaspro yeah. and uh, 
They'll let you know how much they cost. Yeah. It. You can also do a turkey in there. Yes. And uh, yeah. about what size turkey would you say would fit in there? Uh, you can do a pretty good size turkey in there. We did like um, usually like 15, 16 pound turkey. Okay, about 15 Yeah, you can, you can really do bigger ones, but we just usually we kind of keep it to that size. Okay. 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 And now. One of the good portions of having the organized groups like this is being able to Something draw the variety of people and talents and knowledge that you have in preparing a meal or putting on a, uh, a banquet. Me, give me one of these there, maybe you might need that uh, paper towel off to the side okay. there so they can see what you're doing. Okay. And what part of the chicken are you using, Derek? This is actually wild turkey. Wild turkey? Shot, yeah, caught from the mountain. I guess okay. new guys got this. Is that, the, is that the breast? Or? This is the breast of the wild turkey right okay. now. Okay. And you just cut them up to inch and a half. Okay. To size. And then you're going to show us how to wrap this guy up with the bacon. So do you have some of this at the party? No, not that day, I think. No, <laughs> we didn't have time that day. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to have But it's just salt and garlic, yeah? Yeah. Garlic, basically. salt, and some pepper and of course you say you can use the uh, chicken or turkey or whatever yeah now I guess th there's not ducks that you can hunt out here right yeah, right now not. unless you go to uh, Wailua Pond might have some Mike. problems how's that thing but what if what if you Okay, so you just got to regulate the temperature. Yeah, we got to regulate. It goes over 350. Okay. Uh, what we're okay. doing now is increasing it slightly as the temperature drops with the chicken in there. We want to try and keep it oh, up I higher. Oh, going size. down. It's right. Perfect. Okay. So in other words, someone's always got to keep yeah. an eye on that thermometer to make sure it's right it there about 350. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the longer it's kept at the, the steady steady temperature the more uniform the cooking yeah, you becomes you pour them i mix them okay uh what are you guys doing now neil uh, we're adding just regular garlic salt um we usually put approximately um a tablespoon of um, garlic salt per pound we got a little little over a pound so or two tastes yeah and what about and about a half a teaspoon of yeah. salt of pepper black pepper if you like it spicy, <laughs> you can add more. I would add more. So, I like them. And we just mix it up, and um, it's real simple. We get a slice of bacon, and we just wrap it till we, um, til we pretty much cover the whole bird. And then okay. we got um, toothpicks, and we just stick them through to hold the bacon on. You folks must use a lot of this <coughs> garlic salt. <laughs> we use that as yeah. our special, that's our secret recipe right there. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. I think Spare I bought a some, moment. I bought some garlic salt Spare once and I hardly used it. It turned to rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next time when you come over, Jack, you bring that. <laughs> <laughs> we used to use all kind of fancy seasonings before, but... Mushrooms uh, is good too, you know. We just decided it's simp simple, just garlic salt. And so when, when is bird season? Uh, bird season usually, it's bird season starts the um, first Saturday in November. And it runs all the way to the um, third weekend of January. And how do you know where you can go to hunt? You can't hunt anywhere, yeah, you, right? Uh, I'll let Steve explain to you uh, where Steve Moore. and how. Hunting is done mostly in uh, Mauna Kea and there's some cooperative game management areas. Uh, Kapapala Ranch is a cooperative game management area. There are years if the hunting and the bird population is good, Kahua Ranch will open up. And also Puwawa Ranch is another one that will open up for the public to hunt too. Now, uh, there, mu there must be some etiquette in hunting, yeah, because it can be get kind of dangerous when you're up there and everybody's firing away. Uh, what do you do to not get shot? 
Well, number one, you're always aware of what's going on and around you when you're hunting. <clears throat> and during bird season, one of the requirements that we have is everyone is to wear blaze orange. And uh, that becomes highly visible. Uh, <clears throat> we'll make a lot of noise. Uh, it doesn't bother the birds any. In fact, they'll hide. And if we've got dogs, sometimes it makes it easier for us to find them. So uh, our safety record has been very good. Actually, it's a safer sport than golf or football. Stay going good. Despite the fact that we're using uh, firearms. <clears throat> and uh, now, if you're going to use a shotgun, you have to have a special training and you have to have a license or something? All hunters now have to go through a state-sponsored uh, hunter safety education course. Uh, the courses come out, you'll see notices in the newspaper about them. And one of the things on the Big Island, every time that they've had a hunter safety education course, the class has been overbooked, not overbooked, but uh, there's more people that want to go in than what the class can actually handle. So it's almost a turn away situation. Yeah, the so information sign up early. Sign up early uh, even if you're not thinking about going hunting, if you are uh, a little bit interested in the outdoors, the information that's put out at the hunter education class is, uh, I would say, valuable for a person's lifetime knowledge. Uh, you'll get experience um, in firearms handling, uh, safety, outdoorsmanship that cover shotguns, rifles, uh, the old muzzle loader type, archery, and uh, it's a well presented class. Uh, oh. A lot of us make sure that as soon as our uh, children are old enough that they go through it just for the education that they glean. If you're in college, haven't been through it, and uh, just for a well-rounded individual, the information is excellent. Okay, Highly now, recommended reading. Excuse me, Steve. Yes. Now, what did you do with those uh, bacon-wrapped turkey? What, what, how, do you, how do you cook it? Okay, um, you can either um, bake them, you can deep fry them, or we cook them on the grill. Um, since we don't want to smoke out the whole place, we're going <laughs> to deep fry them, but we're going to get the chicken kind of set first, and then we're going to put the um, turkey in there. So okay. we're going to have to do that. So now if you're going to bake them, at what temperature do you bake them? Um, approximately 350. I, I don't know exactly how long. Usually we just kind of watch it till the bacon gets um, really crispy, and then it's usually done. So should be First fast. First time, yeah, it's, it That's cooks pretty fast. fast. About how many minutes would you say? Uh, maybe not even one, maybe one minute, minute half. Right. Uh, maybe at 350, maybe maybe five minutes. And it could be cool. a little more if, if baking, maybe a little longer. I guess right? it'll cook pretty fast because they're pretty small pieces of, of turkey breast, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's part of the reason we make it so small. So it's, it's fast, uh, we don't have to marinate it. We just um, cut it up, put our seasoning in, wrap it, and we can just cook it, and it doesn't take long to cook either. And then you can do it on the hibachi or deep fry it, you say? Yes. Usually we um, do it on the grill because we usually end up, end up making it for poo-poos and stuff or for outside when we're doing that kind of stuff. If well, uh, do you folks use uh, dogs when you go uh, hunting? Uh, yes, yes, usually. Uh, all of us here tonight have um, dogs, so we use dogs. And what, what kind of dog is the best dog to use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Steve knows. Steve. Steve knows. Steve's our dog. <laughs> the best dog Everybody to have is the one that we've got in our backyards, and the breed doesn't matter. It's the time that we spend with the individual animal and what comes out of it. The normal dogs that are used on the Big Island are the German short hair pointers, the Brittany Spaniel, the English pointer, there are some English setters, and the Labrador retriever is also used. Hmm. They're very, uh, they make also excellent family and pet dogs. It's not just one specific item that they're going after. Okay. And half the pleasure in bird hunting is being able to work with your dogs in the off season, train them, they become like uh, family members. So they're very, they're very close with us and uh, they help us put the food on the table and double the enjoyment of being on the mountain hunting. Okay, so uh, while we're waiting, are you gonna do the vinaros? 
Pretty good, Jack. You gotta say it real <laughs> fast, <laughs> then they'll never yeah. know. <laughs> what are we gonna do uh, next? Well, you tried that already, I think, Jack, at the huh? bird club. Did I? Yeah. Okay. On the sticks. And we're we're also gonna do the uh, chicken soup with so many noodles, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the one. Um, I'm going to be doing the vinga dosh, and I, I mean, imagine most of you have eaten vinga dosh already, right? No? Oh, okay. First of all, if you don't like vinegar, cider vinegar, it's not for you, okay? Because it has a strong vinegar flavor. Kind of like chicken adobo. Very close, oh. very close, except with the vinga dosh, you had Hawaiian chili peppers and black peppers. Okay, so I'll give you the recipe real quick. Now, if you're using three pounds of game bird, which tonight we're using turkey. You gotta remember now, turkey breast is on the dry side. So um, if I had a choice, I would take a bird that is more on the oily side. Uh, How do you like, know if the bird is oily? Well, your game birds usually are not as oily as say um, poultry that you buy in the store and if you use a poultry in the store myself personally I like the thighs um, one way I put it in is I'm not a breast man I like thighs okay and it's strictly because there's a lot of moisture in the thighs okay take it for what it's worth um, so as I mentioned three pounds of boneless meat Whatever meat you want to use. We're talking about fowl now. Game birds, poultry in the store. Okay. And the game birds, as Steve mentioned, would be the urkel, the pheasant, the quail, black franklin. I've never tried the black franklin. The kalish. So those birds would be good. The other item you want to add is a one and a half cups of cider vinegar. I prefer cider. Okay, now. The side of it. Excuse me while I take a dip here. You guys all should know what side of it is. I got it in a sock because it's, it's a glass bottle. <laughs> I didn't want to nick it. Okay? Cider, cider. vinegar. Cider vinegar. Okay. That's the best. Then you got two cloves of garlic. Now you're going to crush the garlic. That's the way I do it. Okay? Okay. Some guys will press it, some guys will dice it. I prefer to crush. All right. Okay. The other item would be Hawaiian salt. I use two teaspoons. Okay. Yeah. I'm giving you measurements. Normally when I make it, I don't measure. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. But if you're going to do it right, you want a two teaspoons. Hawaiian salt now. Okay. The other item would be bay leaf. I like to put bay leaf in, at least one. Some people say to crush it, but um, if you're using bay leaves, the dry ones, if you crush it, those things are pretty sharp if you get it in your mouth. So I prefer to use the whole bay leaf because you're gonna be marinating this overnight. It's not just put it in there for an hour, put it in the refrigerator and then do what you want with it. It's an overnight marination. Um, you wanna use Hawaiian chili peppers. I use three. Here again, as you've noticed throughout the night, it's to your taste. You want it less hot, use one or two. You want it really hot, use five to six. Okay, you make the call. But I crush mine. Some guys will just chop it up. Some guys will just break it and put it in whole like that. I crush, so when you crush, it gets hot. All right. Uh, and then the last thing would be a black pepper. I use, again, for the recipe, quarter teaspoon. Right. And that's the ingredient, that's it. Some other people will use different um, spices, like uh, thyme, and I don't remember the other one. I, I particularly don't care for that. Uh, most of our guys in the club that cook, we try to keep it simple. Simplicity is the best way to do it. Don't get fancy. Tastes good to you, good enough. Use it, okay? Don't, don't, don't get fancy. So you're gonna get in trouble when you start to get fancy. Okay, now, uh, as demonstrated earlier, when they were cutting the meat, the turkey in this case, 
You want it about bite size. Thank you, Ron. Okay, I'm going to use the same turkey that was left over from the, uh, the bacon wrap. So this has added seasoning on, the garlic salt. That's the only, only difference. Okay. All right. But we're going to skewer this on barbecue sticks. And we're going to do it on, on, on this uh, gas burner. But like anything, to me, cooking on an open fire is the best thing. How about this size? You want it bigger? Cut them bigger. Up to you. Less work when you cut it big. So how do you folks know when you're going to have a good bird season? We hope that we kind of uh, try to keep track of the rain the year before. Water is the staff of all life, and it doesn't, doesn't matter whether uh, we're talking about birds, mammals, or people. If we have good rains, the birds know that it's uh, all right to go ahead and uh, lay their eggs. Nobody knows exactly what stimulates them into laying their eggs during wet seasons, but during dry seasons, it's been they shown that they will not uh, lay eggs. One of the things that we found out that the bird hunters in New Zealand do to check to see how good their season's going to be is watch the cattle's milk production. If production goes up on uh, milk with a the cattle, they feel that they're going to be in for a fairly decent uh, game bird season. And uh, we haven't followed that over here. It's just we have Mauna Kea to hunt on. And that's a, a very, very special treat for all of us. OK, now you're going to take the bird out. So Ron, maybe you might step to the side so the camera can, maybe we can get the overhead camera to uh, view the uh, chickens coming out of the oil. And uh, or you're just going to check it to see. OK, how does it look? OK. Looks like there should be some stimulated appetites out there now. Uh, so Keith, uh, how's it going over there? Okay, with I, I finished cutting the remainder of the turkey. Um, from this position, what we want to do is make the marination, the one I gave you earlier, and soak it overnight. Okay. And then we will skewer it on the barbecue sticks. The following day, whether it be in the morning, lunchtime, or in afternoon, and then on the fire it goes. And again, the best is on a charcoal fire. All right. So, so what does that name mean? The um, I, I don't have that answer. <laughs> I can't pronounce this, so I thought I maybe I, I, sh I should have checked, but I. I well, my later mind. on, someone can give us a call yeah. and let us know. Anyway, the way I think you spell it is uh, V I N H A, and then it's. Right. D apostrophe A L H O S. Correct. Did you get it? V I N H A, and then yeah. the next word is D apostrophe A L H O S. Vinodos. <laughs> okay. So, so now, what, what Ron is doing now is he's. Uh, this is the one I did yesterday. We screwed it this afternoon before we came to the studio. And since we can't use a, a hibachi charcoal grill in here, we're using a gas grill. The ones that have already been cooked yeah. on an open fire is, uh, will be warmed up in the microwave Probably later. Okay. Okay. But now you got to remember now, it's turkey. So it's going to be on the dry side. Yeah. The key here is just try and see if you can pick up the flavor of the sauce. If you like it, uh, some of you wrote it down, use it. If you don't like it, toss it out. So Keith, uh, what is the best uh, fowl meat to use to make this? Game birds, I prefer the Urkel. Urkel. Yeah, that's my preference. Some guys like the chucker. Pheasant is good, but I'm not that lucky in shooting pheasant. So, so what, what's the hardest bird for you to get? The pheasant. Pheasant. Yep. <laughs> you mean the Urkel? You can get the Urkel all right? Well, I, I get pretty lucky with the Urkel and the yeah, Chucker. And that's what it is, luck. Right place at the right time, and your dog is having a good day. So how did you do this season? 
To be honest, I did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the right place at the right time. What did you get? I got a lot of chucker. Uh, the Urkos, I wasn't that fortunate. But if you get one, that's a good day. I to hear me, the day. Urko is almost like a chicken. Yeah, and if you saw earlier in the back, that's the one that simple colors. It's just dark brown and a light brown. It's not a pretty looking bird, but it's a tasty bird to me. Yeah. Would you and say look at the size? It's pretty good size. Would you say the Urkel is better than the turkey and the chucker, or me personally? Yes, I like the Urkel. Chucker is good too. Now, don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose, you put it on the table. I'll go for the Urkel. Now they got these uh, Japanese quails up there too, but those are kind of small. small. Huh? <laughs> fun, fun to uh, hunt, but uh, not too much meat. Okay. Yeah. What about? Uh, do you both go hunting for doves? Is there a dove season? Uh, there is a dove season, and it's usually open during the regular bird season. It's just that um, not that many doves up there, and especially if you're up on Manakea hunting or Kapapala. Um, you rather hunt the game birds. You're not after doves. Okay. <laughs> I'm not after doves. You know? Maybe That's on right. the way out, you walk in and there's only one dove. Well, That's it's right. up to you, but I, I don't. Doves are peaceful birds, right? Yeah, they're peaceful yeah. birds. Okay. I used to hunt a lot of doves in Honolulu, but that's a long time ago. Okay. So, uh, how, how's the uh, deep fried chicken coming? Yeah, it's ready now. Maybe it's ready already. Yeah, Almost check ready? Em. We check them one more time. Okay, they're going to check the uh, deep fried chicken one more time. How does it look, folks? we stuck on the side here. How's it look, Derek? Is it ready? Looks ready? Yeah. Okay. They're gonna. It's ready. This is it, folks. They're gonna bring out the deep fried chicken. Go ahead. Careful, don't get uh, burned now. Wow, look you at that. It, Steve. You got it. Whoa, golden brown. Ooh. Oh, that looks, that looks good. All the juices sealed in with that real hot oil. Okay. okay. So I wonder if you can put that up in the front corner here, uh, Steve, and maybe we can get the overhead camera can zoom in over on it and uh, we'll let everybody look at it. And we're going to try that this evening, so it looks real good. I'd almost expect a call from that guy, uh, Colonel Sanders, after looking at those. Looks better than the Colonel to me. Okay, so now, uh, what are you folks going to do now? Right now, we're going to make the chicken, I um, mean the turkey with the bacon. Turkey with the bacon. Okay. And do you have a special basket or something that you put it in so you don't mm -hmm. lose them? <laughs> Not tonight. They usually close when they're... Okay, so you're just going to put it on that tray. Yeah. 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 Okay, maybe we can get the uh, overhead camera to uh, ready now. That's yeah. what show ready. this uh, whole process here where we get the uh, turkey breast, which is cut into small pieces and wrapped with bacon. And we're going to deep fry it. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, can we see? Okay, there we go. You just gonna drop it in, or? Looks like the fire, the fire went out. This, uh, wait there, wait there, wait there. We got enough gas, huh? Yeah. I remember one time we ran out of gas on this program, and uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, we got gas. Good, All right. good. To put them on. <laughs> Let's right. go, let's go. Yeah. Okay, we just gotta beef them off first. Maybe we should wait a little while. We gotta wait a little while. Okay, they're gonna heat up the oil a little bit before... Okay, they're gonna put the... Uh, see, uh, Neil, can you step aside so that the overhead camera can kind of show you? Oh, there you go, okay. 
Well, it looks like we're gonna have a lot of foul tonight, huh? <laughs> All They're all fouls. <laughs> we foul tonight. Yeah. Right. I think uh, the technicians cooked a big pot of rice tonight, so we're going to have rice and foul. So, uh, Steve, what do you think is the most enjoyable part of uh, bird hunting? Just being able to be up there with the dogs, family, friends, and uh, it's almost like an oh, ancient no. pursuit. No. Uh, yeah. Our normal we'll hunting runs. We'll start at uh, sun up, and many of us will finish hunting at 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Then we'll take a rest until about 2 or 2.30 before we take up hunting again. And hunting again ends in uh, approximately 6 o'clock or half an hour before sunset. During that period though, between approximately 10 and 2, okay. is when we'll perhaps move a location or uh, hook up with some of our friends that we know that are hunting down farther on the road or farther up from where we're at and uh, talk story and again we're known for the food that comes out so some of the spreads that come out during uh, season is, is wonderful that part is good and in four hours uh, after you eat you actually get a chance to sit down relax and uh, it's almost a therapeutic trip now what if you're not a good cook uh can you buy something to bring, you know, it's always a potluck affair, I guess, when you go bird hunting and you don't want to go bird hunting and not bring anything and just eat, so you got to bring something, right? Well, for those that want to do it that way, uh, like I said, this group's got a sweet tooth and we can always talk about desserts that can be brought up. I see, okay. <laughs> so the for the non-cookers, uh, uh, we can bring... Uh, the non-cookers, there's always something that we Bring can Bring a dessert uh, work out. or something. Absolutely. Right? Then, then you can partake in all the other things. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe I'm going to join that uh, bird hunters club. I think it uh, would be a good trip. One little interesting side note that uh, the club has taken uh, part in. Two years ago when we had the huge flood in November, uh, Kapapala Ranch took uh, an awful lot of damage. Uh, the people that were actually running the house were locked in on an island with raising water. Their entire house and the area surrounding it got covered with boulders, 60-foot uh, sections of trees that the bark and limbs were stripped off. It actually looked like it had come through a complete processing plant. Steve, maybe you can get up uh, closer over there so you can get on the camera oh, okay, and people right. can see you talking. Uh, there you go. Check, check. Our club went over on the weekend right after the flood and kind of uh, assisted in uh, clearing some of the debris around the house and regaining just a little bit of order in the, uh, the premises. It was very shortly thereafter that Thanksgiving came and with Hawaii Island Archery Club and Big Island Bird Hunters put on a complete Thanksgiving meal for the uh, Cran family and all the people that came to help the ranch and uh, it was actually a very true, spent, traditional Thanksgiving meal. And that's uh, one that we're kind of glad of. It takes you almost back to Pilgrim days and lets you understand what takes place. Okay, How, how's, it, uh, how's it coming there, uh, Ron? You looking like good? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that why you're hiding it from the camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it smells good from here. <laughs> well, while we're waiting for that, you know, it's about uh, five after eight. So should we start yeah. the question and answers? Yeah. And, uh, sure, that'll be good. Okay. So it's uh, a little bit after eight o'clock. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the uh, class to question and answers. And uh, we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located here in the, Mo uh, in the Mookini Library uh, on the UH Hilo campus. And uh, we are coming to you live. So the numbers are 974-7726 and 961-9046. So if you have any questions about bird hunting or how to cook fowl, uh, please give us a call. We have the, uh, the experts on bird hunting here, and if you have any questions, uh, either about cooking uh, game birds, uh, give us a call. Again, the numbers are 974-7726 and 961-9046. Do we have any questions from the classroom here? 
We have a question in the back. All right, go ahead, Doug. Uh, actually, I had a, uh, a couple questions. Uh, uh, is your mic on? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, the I think you call it the Vin Diajos. What, what was the name of that? What uh, the the last? Uh, um, the which dish was that? The uh, the one with the uh, one and a half cup cider vinegar and uh, um. I mean, any sense uh, with the the vinados? Yeah, okay. that one. Sorry. You want to know how to spell that? No, no, no. It's uh, actually I was wondering if you could use chicken with that. Um, and uh, uh, also, do uh, vegetables go good on the skewers? Like, can you? Does that make any sense? Did you get that question? I, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you because of the noise here with the. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, I was just wondering if you could, in that, if you could use chicken uh, in that, and also if any vegetables go good on the skewers. Oh, okay. Like for the can you know on that vinados? Uh, can you also put some vegetables in between the, the skewers? You know. Okay, I, I was just wondering if you had any recommended anything. What, what was that again? Uh, if you can recommend anything. Uh, Almost there. Re re if you can recommend something. Any vegetables? It's okay. Uh, Bell peppers, uh, tomatoes, onions. Okay, thank you. And uh, also, you were talking about the the uh, gun cl class. I was wondering uh, uh, if you happen to know how much that that costs. The gun class. The, yeah. I, I can't hear with all this noise. My hearing is terrible. I'm gonna shut this thing down now. What was that? When is the gun class? Oh, when when is the gun class uh, taught? How much? Okay, how much does it cost? There's no cost for the hunter safety course. There's no cost except your time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any callers? <coughs> We have two callers, so uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, Dr. Fuji. How are you today? Hi. Okay, fine. Thank you. And what where are you calling you? from? On the move. Oh, okay. Oh, Pat. <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time hearing tonight. Go I ahead. wonder what to do with the feathers. I beg your pardon? What to do with the feathers? The, the bird feathers. feathers, yes. Oh, okay. What do you do with the feathers? Some people out there want to make feather lays. The bird hunters? The, what was that? He wanted to know what they can do with, what they do what with do the do feathers. What do you do with the feathers? Oh, uh, we've had people ask for the feathers. Uh, some people are making uh, hat bands. Uh, other people use them for different ornaments. Uh, if you have an interest in them, if you can contact me at 966-6190, I can put your name on the waiting list and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Thank you. And Dr. Fuji? Yes. Um, it's Vinga Dorge. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Vinga Dorge. I'm so sorry I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> I'll spell it out for you though. Let's see here. It, it, what did I do with my notes here? And it's oh, usually, here it is. Then usually roast put, uh, potatoes with it. They, they what? They usually roast potatoes, they soak the potatoes in the brine and they, and they cook it with the pork. Oh, I see. So, so you also have potatoes with it? Yes. Ah, okay. You okay. mean on the skewers? No, no, when you roast, you usually roast a whole, uh, you know, a oh, whole so you, slab you In other pork. words, you can cook this dish on the skewers or roast it? Yeah, yes. Oh, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Okay, doctor. Okay. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? Kauai. Okay, and your question? <laughs> you guys make lots of food over there. We're starving over here. Do you think you ever come to <laughs> come Kauai? Come join us. <laughs> you could just come to Kauai and make a, a show here at the college, Community <laughs> College. <laughs> well, maybe one day, uh, maybe I should go to Kauai and uh, do a focus and ag class from the uh, Kauai Community College uh, Yeah, yeah, studio you know why? We have better birds over here on the island. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, why don't you line up some people who would be willing to cook over there, and I'll surely come over. Okay, I'll hold you to it. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for calling from Kauai. Uh, do we have another caller? I think my earphone is not working. I can't hear. Do, 
I, I think we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. Um, can women join the bird hunting club? Oh, absolutely. We have uh, at least six women that are members already. We invite everyone to come down. There's no... Anybody that enjoys the sport or thinks that they may, please come down, talk story with us, and uh, we welcome you. Okay, and um, can children join also? Absolutely. Like I was saying earlier, we actually have a family rate, and we encourage the youth and younger children to come down, and it's a good start on life. And from what age do you recommend? Uh, for actual hunting, I believe what the Department of Land and Natural Resources is saying is either 10 or 12 years old before they can go through the hunter education class to get a license to go hunting. But if they want to come down and be members, they can come down before then. It's oh. a real family-oriented group of people that we have here. Okay. If you're curious, uh, the upcoming Hilo JCs County Fair that we've been in for the last six years, come down and talk story with us, or come to one of our meetings the first Tuesday of the month. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, can you have Derek drop off a chicken at my house, please? <laughs> Well, if, if there's any leftover, we've got a hungry <laughs> class here tonight. So if there's some leftover, then uh, Derek will bring you a little piece. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Hilo. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Cut this thing, you know, cut him around. Just cut him around. Hello, you're on the air. <sighs> okay, cut that thing. <laughs> oh. Oh, here okay, we go. get this thing away from you. Are you going to ask a question or... I guess we'll take the next caller. Uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, my name's Leo Buchanan. I'm calling from Oahu. Okay. And I'm really enjoying your program, but I'm interested to know if there are any hunting, bird hunting clubs here on Oahu you can turn me on to. Okay, Steve, uh, any bird hunting clubs uh, there on Oahu? I have not heard of any organized bird hunting clubs on Oahu. Uh, if you could contact me later, I'll put you in touch with people that are involved with the Hawaii Hunting Advisory Council, and they may know more people that are involved on Oahu and can probably uh, help you get started in the right direction. All right, thank you very much. Now, yes. how do I contact you? Uh, you can call me at 966-6190. Very code 808. <laughs> 966 <laughs> Six one nine zero. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoy your program. Okay, I can well, also be emailed calling. if you want to write this down, uh, Jack. At what? Churkle, this is one the bird hunters should enjoy. That's capital C H U R K E L at M S N dot com. Well, hey, thanks a lot. Okay, Bye -bye. well, thank you for calling, and uh, we'll take the next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Where are yes. you calling from? Oh, I'm calling from Oahu. Okay, any yeah. question? Yeah, oh, I'm getting hungry at every dinner. Yeah, me anyway, too. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get this um, bigger dosh um, recipe. Okay, do you have a recipe? Oh, you want the recipe or are you gonna give us one? No, I want it. You want <laughs> it? Okay, try wait here. Let me see if I can find it on the. Uh, the sheet of paper here for our caller from, was it Oahu? Yes, Oahu. Okay. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, let's see, can you read that? Let me let me zoom back. Can you read that? Okay, right there. Let me, let me bring it in a little closer. Can you read Hold. that? Okay, I'll just leave that on the screen. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I think we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Hilo. And uh, my question is, the big guy in the back with the big afro, are you really going to let him hunt with a gun for birds? I can hear uh, hey, hold over a second now. Wait. <laughs> uh, now He's got to answer that one. Uh, uh, actually, all the opera is, uh, is is just paying homage and tribute to uh, my roommate and teammate G. And I just want to say happy birthday. So happy birthday, G. But you know, uh, actually, I, I can hunt with a gun. It's all good. I, you know. Good answer. You don't have to worry about it. Good <laughs> big name. 
Okay, well, thank you for calling. I teach him awful hunt. We have another caller, so uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Jesse. Hello. Hello, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? My question is to Steve Hurt, please. Yes. Um, I'd like to know if you take amateur female um, hunters on bird hunting trips. Okay, do you take amateur female bird hunters on your bird hunting trips? We have done that already, yes. Yeah? W would Neil Okuda accompany you too? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Neil we would. Can, we can talk him into something. Neil would. Okay, so when's the next hunting trip? <laughs> next hunting trip won't be until November when bird season actually starts, which will okay, be quite okay. a ways away. Um, Mel says hi. <laughs> Tell him hi. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, thank Bye. you for calling. <laughs> and we don't have any callers, so while we're waiting for some phone calls, how's the uh, the uh, bacon wrapped turkey coming? Is it uh, out of the uh, the cooker, or how does it look? Maybe uh, okay, Derek, you've got it there. We we can get an overhead yeah. camera on it. There we go. That is the that is the. Uh, Turkey stuffed bacon. Yeah. Okay, we have another caller. Uh, could you Let's let us right know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, where are you calling from? Uh, hello. Okay, and your question? This is for uh, Neil. Okay. Can, can you trap birds? Uh, can, you can you folks trap birds? Uh, you, you, may, you can trap birds with a special permit. But in regular hunting areas during hunting season, it's not legal in the state of Hawaii. Okay. Um, when you coming home for Thursday, Thursday? <laughs> right after the show. Okay. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Aloha. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. And why is it that uh, you have to have a special permit to trap birds? Is there uh, Steve can explain that a little better about <laughs> the why it's not legal to trap birds, you need a permit. Uh, the state is the party that owns all the game birds. They're the ones that set the regulations. If we were to go out and trap them all the time, there wouldn't be any uh, potential of having anything left to be able to hunt. So game management is a huge tool that we try to employ along with the uh, biological practices that we employ. And okay, it's just another Steve, tool in management. We have another caller, so uh, we'll take the next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the questions? Please. Yeah, how you doing? I'm calling from Hilo. Uh, okay. I was wondering if that guy with the afro could eat a whole bird by himself. <laughs> okay, the popular man back there, our star <laughs> basketball player for the Vulcans. Uh, go ahead. Uh, can you handle a whole bird? Oh, no, you guys are killing me, but at least one and a half. But, you know, I, at, at least, least one and a half. At least one, you know, but... You know, actually, every time seems like every time we see Derek, you know, it's just like, oh, <laughs> thank you for coming. Okay. Any other question from Hilo? I guess not. You, we have a question here. Uh, go ahead. How how do you prepare the bird once you've shot it? Like, how do you? What I do mean, you do? After you shot it. Yeah. After you shot, actually shot the bird, then how exactly do you prepare okay. it to to eat it? Okay, Steve? Uh, normal preparation can be done in several ways. We clean the insides out. Um, some, some of us will skin the birds in the field. We have to leave the heads on as part of the regulations. And other people will defeather them. And then again, uh, a lot of us will soak the uh, game birds in baking soda and salt for a period of 24 hours in the refrigerator. Take that out, rinse it out, another 24 hours soaking in the refrigerator in salt water. After that, you can freeze it or prepare it in any manner that you wish. Okay, we have two callers on the line, so uh, we'll take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Um, I was wondering, uh, how long did it, did, it, did it take for them to cook the, the chicken in the deep fryer? The whole chicken. Okay, how long does it take to cook the chicken? We had three of them in there, so <laughs> how long did it take? Uh, it usually takes about five minutes per pound. That's for one bird, so um, the um, three of them together doesn't 
take much longer. You might leave it in a few minutes over that, but on the average, um, five minutes per pound of bird. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you for calling, and we have another <coughs> caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? And I wanted to know, if any uh, one of you guys bird hunters there seen any ring neck pheasants up in Kapapala? Okay, Steve, or... Oh, yeah. Uh, the ring neck pheasants are up there, and there's also our good friend, the elusive true green pheasant. Okay, what about the Afghans? Afghans we have not seen in Kapapala. We've seen them up on Mauna Kea and around Parker Ranch area. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. And we have another caller, so could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and question? Um, I wanted to know, is there a limit of how much birds you can shoot per day or per season? That's a good question, Absolutely. Steve. Each day has its own limit. And the bag limit per species is set by the state biologist, depending on the surveys that they've done prior to season opening. It's a management tool to ensure that we always have a good, renewable source of supply of birds for our next season. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling. From Hilo, we have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, are you there? Did we lose? Hello? You? Yes, where are you calling from? Hi, I had a question for the gentleman in the wig. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, his, that's his personal <coughs> hair. <coughs> go ahead, go ahead with the question. Um, I was wondering how much chicken you could eat in five minutes. <laughs> I don't know, it smells pretty good, good over there. Uh, <laughs> um, Let's see it. Oh, you want to see it, huh? Oh. Well, you know, I think we're just about out of time, but let me make my way over there. Hold up. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll see what. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, we have about another minute. Uh, do you think we can get another phone call or shall we? Okay, we, we have one more caller, I believe. So could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? Okay, and your question? I'd like to know what would be your first preference to bury in a peacock? What was the question again? How would you force a peacock? How do you take care of peacocks? Prepare. How do you prepare peacocks? How would you? Oh. That's a good question. I have not had the fortune of uh, running across such an instance. Does anybody else? No idea. Well, no one has uh, come have across a pea uh, peacock while yeah. they've been hunting over <coughs> here on the Big Island. So I there, there have been peacocks harvested in Puawa, and I can assure you that uh, should we harvest one, we'll find a way to prepare it. Just give uh, Steve a call at 966-6190 and uh, he'll find a way to, to cook a peacock and he'll let you know. Okay. And I thank you very much for calling. Uh, we've completely run out of time and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Big Island Bird Hunters for joining us this evening and sharing their uh, experiences in, in hunting here and also for preparing the various dishes and we just can't wait to uh, partake of it. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching and we hope you'll join us next Thursday when we have Ken's House of Pancakes. <laughs>